Hello and welcome to my channel, Keeping It Real with Alicia. They did not show why we were arguing. And I think a lot of viewers walked away still to this day confused as to what were y'all arguing about. So I feel like if there was more context shown, you would understand that I'm not arguing with my husband about something that just happened yesterday and I'm just, eh, eh, eh. this is something that's been going on our entire marriage. And now that we're coming up on 10 years, I'm basically like, look, you've been saying that things were going to change and things were going to happen for 10 years and I'm still not seeing those changes. And I'm, 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 I'm giving you everything you signed up for. When I became your wife, I gave you everything I promised you I would give you. And I'm, I'm needing you to, to come with it, you know? Um, but that, that part wasn't shown or shared. So people are just looking at me like, yo, why is she going in on Chris? No, this isn't a conversation that's new. When it comes to you and Chris, what was the piece that we didn't see? Because I remember, first of all, the girl at the bar thought that I probably secretly was in love with you the way I was defending you. I was like, she loves that man. You got to see them together. And they're like, no, nah, did you see the way she was talking to him? She was beating that man over the head every scene she got. And I was like, oh. I no, know that was, that was me being fed up with hearing over and over again for 10 years. I'm trying. I'm going to work on it. And then there's no work. So my main thing was, when it comes to the function of our house, when it comes to the children, when it comes to even homeschooling, all of those different things, I'm wearing all of those hats. Um, Chris is great when it comes to, like, if I, if I ask him to do something specific, or like, for instance, he's in charge of food, you know, now. So when it comes to making the kids breakfast, um, he does that. Um, so there's certain roles that he will now do. But prior to, what I'm asking is, you can't say, I support you, I support you. But then when I actually need your support, it's just words. Mm -hmm. So if I have me leave essentials, not for lazy moms, and then we both talked about this radio show, I'm gonna be getting up early. And this is the routine that I've established for the kids. This is how we've been functioning. And then once the time comes to make moves, it's like moves aren't being made, you know? Um, so it was just the struggle of getting back what I'm putting in and getting that reciprocated uh, support. You know, not just saying I'm going to try or I'm, 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 I'm doing as best as I can. I'm like, you're, you're home. And I'm just asking for you to just take on more of that leadership role because I'm getting overwhelmed. I'm, it's too much on my plate. And I really need you as a husband to cover, protect, lead, do all of those things and not be so comfortable. So it's been an ongoing struggle because I am a very do- action oriented person and Chris is very laid back but you know it's like it's just one of those struggles in marriage where it's just like I'm doing way too much like I, I can't create the rules for the house establish the rules reinforce the rules and then make sure everything's getting done on top of everything else I'm doing so it was just a lot um and, and it was an ongoing struggle and then there are other things on top of it that I felt um, needed to be addressed. But since it wasn't shown, I would prefer for Chris to address those things. I don't want to say it because people already think how I'm talking to him is disrespectful when I'm just telling him what I need. Um, but I would rather for him to address what those things were um, because it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, my husband is a retired athlete. Um, NFL guys are used to being catered to. They're used to being, you know, babied. And, and, and mm -hmm. taken care of and all those different things. And I'm like, we got to grow together. In other words, like we got to grow together. And actually a clip from the reunion show went viral and I ended up sharing it because you made perfect sense to me, especially as a black woman that I can be saying something for years or for months, mm -hmm. <laughs> for hours. And then how I'm delivering it may change and we'll totally skip while I'm frustrated, but now you're telling me to calm down. And why right. are you upset? Why are you being so mad? Why are you being so loud? And I wanted us to have that conversation for a second because even when I posted it, the women in my comments were like, nail on the head. I've been in meetings where I'm like, no, we can't do it that way. Right. Oh, don't, get, don't get upset. I'm not. We're having a conversation and we've had this meeting eight times already. Right. So can we talk about that statement and what it felt to see women, not just locally, but around the world gravitate to being in that space? Right, right. Um, it's, it's very difficult because 
I went the nice route. I went the, the very meek and humble route. I've said it joke, jokingly, sarcastically, humbly, all of those different nice little ways. I've been as creative as you can possibly be when it comes to how do I deliver this message in such a way that it comes off in the, in the way it needs to and that he hears me and that we can walk away from this conversation and be excited. So if you have these conversations year after year after year after year, and every time after you have the conversation, you're hearing, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm going to do better. I, I know I hear you. And then a, a, a few weeks later, you're like, you didn't hear me. Nothing's changed. <laughs> or something might change for like a short period of time. And then it's back to what it was. You get to a point where you feel unheard. So to me, unheard is when I'm literally pouring out my heart to you, telling you exactly what I need as a wife but then you're not doing anything to satisfy that need or to improve. That's being unheard. So you're saying you hear me, but you're not really hearing me because you, if, if, if you want the best for me and if you want to love and cover me, then you'll love me the way I need to be loved. And if I'm telling you, this is what I need in order to feel the love from you, then you would do those things, you know, and it can't be one-sided. Um, so it, it, it's one thing about black men, especially black men who have money, um, they typically will look at their ability to provide as their, as your love language, you know, so I'm providing for you, you know, I'm buying this, I'm buying that, that that's your love language. That's me showing love to you, you know? And it's like, no, those are nice things. And I appreciate those things the same way. If, if I get up and make my kids breakfast and I, I, I'm not going to preach over their head that they need to be grateful for that because that's something that is required. That's something that needs to happen. So if we're in a marriage and we're together, and, together I know that, and I know that this is the way you need to be loved, I can do all the extras, but I still need to do the one thing or the two things or the three. Um, and then, of course, Jeff does my makeup. But me and Riley will sit down and we'll come up with looks together. Um, or she'll say, Riley, her, her outfits are always amazing. I wanted to mention that for another reason, because you and Riley are actually friends in real life. And a lot of people could look at you and see all that you have at your fingertips, you yes. could have gone to any designer, could have rolled the dice with anyone, and you poured into your own community and into one of your tribe members. Why was that important for you? Because a lot of times I feel like we be waiting for somebody else to say something cool or it's this, that, and the third. Well, we got people who can do an eyebrow, a lash, a thick, yes. a drink, or whatever else. Whenever you have people that are in your personal space, they need to be important to you. They need to have that right energy. And like, I've groomed friendships of people that we started out working together. Like Jeff and I, who does my makeup. I love Jeff. Like, I can call on Jeff. He is a true friend. Let me make sure I specify. Jeff is a true friend. Riley Knox is a true friend. I met Riley because Riley was a makeup artist who did my makeup way back in the day. I met Riley when I was 19 years old and have known her ever since it's been almost 20 years and we've had moments where we disconnected from our friendship for a long amount of time and then once we came back together it's like we never missed a beat um riley is super gifted and talented and because of my assistant at the time she is the one who suggested to riley that she does my reunion dress when i was on the last season of our hop Riley was designing all of my outfits for my video. When I shot my video for Drag Queens, my, my single, um, Riley did all of those looks in that video. And she not only set those looks to the side, she stopped what she was doing and literally made my reunion dress in less than two weeks. She hand stoned 27,000 crystals on that dress and dropped what she was doing. And, and that dress literally took her company, created a company and then took it to the next level. So, it's Riley all day for me. I love her. <laughs> That's my boo. And you so now, because we know you have a heart yes. out, and I can't keep you, tea with Monique on YouTube. You done done firearm and trainings and networking events, Miller Eve Essentials. You done did binder time stories. You got singles out. I want to ask what's next, but I'm here for what's popping right now. Oh, my God. I, the Miller Eve Essentials is what's popping right now. Um, good morning, show. That is like a dream experience. I can't even call it a job. It's an experience every single day. I completely 100% love it. If I could do that for the rest of my life, I'm, I'm satisfied. I love it so much. 
Uh, it is what I was meant to do. I've always been, since I was a child, a person who motivates and tries to speak life into people, tries to look at the positive in every situation. And I feel like every life experience I went through led me to this moment. And this is like it. I love it. I love it so much. Um, also, I don't know for people who have children who don't know, but I actually wrote a potty training book. It's called Potty Training Mommy and Daddy. It's on my Not For Lazy Moms uh, website if you go to our store. So that book has been out. Um, it's still, I'm still selling the book. It's been really good getting the feedback from people. It's a very quick read, teaches you how to potty train as early as six months old, which is what I did with my children. Um, and then- Six I'm months? Working. Yes, six months old. As soon as they're able to sit up and they're on solid food. Yes. So yeah, it's been really good. I'm working on my next book, which is going to be a book about life and just going through that journey of life, how to survive that journey of life, mm -hmm. you know, while you're living it and making the best out of it. And I've been just documenting my entire process Everything that I do, everything that I pick up and learn about manifestation, vis visualization, seeing exactly what it is I want to be and watching myself as if I'm looking at a, a movie screen, seeing myself do it. It, it. it has changed my life, my children's lives, and I'm just all about helping people. That's why I'm here. My purpose is to help people. And if I have to show more and more of myself and my process in order to do that, I'm going to continue to do that. I'll take the heat. Lead by example, ain't never heard nobody before, is all that I'm saying. And with that, that's how we're working on a Wednesday. We're only wrapping with Monique because this is a press day for her. And she kind of squeezed me in because I'm special. I love you. But I didn't hear you mention we getting some more music. So, is it possible to get a free really? and you rap with me? Okay. I just like it. <laughs> we can talk about anything. The Good Morning Show, you can talk about, ooh, <laughs> Todd and your zaddy shorts, or Jason. Oh, my God. We could do a little bit of everything because I know you got it in you. I'm it's one of my that favorite one things day. that you do. I'm going just, to just go in and roast Todd. That's what I'm going to do. That's going to be a whole song right there because he likes to give me a hard time. <laughs> He's trying to get out this freestyle right now, Village, but it's all <laughs> right. We will have another moment with Monique, whether she knows it or not. We'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> Truly how we are working on a Wednesday. Um, Monique, although we assume that everybody knows, where can they find you and how can they pull up on you? Can you put that in the comments and I'll pin it real quick? Yes. The best way to find me is www.moniquesamuels.com. And everything about me is on that website. All of the links to all of my business.
encouraging words to 